One of my favorite movies of all time is The Matrix. The hero of the movie, a computer programmer by the name of Neo, discovers that his life and everything he has ever known has been a lie because his entire reality has been a computer simulation. And what he finds out is Hello. that the real world is controlled by an AI master computer I am the called architect. the architect. As fantastical as that scenario sounds, it is entirely plausible. Could you be living a lie this very moment? Could your entire reality, including everything you've ever known, be nothing more than pixels on a super advanced computer simulation? The astonishing answer is coming up right now. The argument that we may be living in a simulation goes something like this. A sufficiently advanced intelligent civilization could easily create ancestor simulations. How? Well, because they would have the computing power to do so. The amount of computing power needed to simulate a human mind can be roughly estimated. Hans Moravec, an expert in robotics at Carnegie Mellon University, estimated this to be about 10 to the 14 operations per second, based on actual computer modeling of individual nervous tissues. Another estimate by Nick Bostrom of Oxford University has shown this to be up to 10 to the 17 operations per second, based on simulating the interconnections of synapses in the brain. And this kind of simulation would make the simulated beings conscious because they would essentially have exactly the same brain capability of any real humans. Do we have the capability to perform these kinds of computations? No, not currently. But many people, including Ray Kurzweil, director at Google, have argued that such technology is only a couple of decades away. Eric Drexler, a PhD engineer from MIT, outlined a design for a system the size of a sugar cube that could perform 10 to the 21 operations per second. And Robert Bradbury has conceptualized a hypothetical computing megastructure called a Matryoshka brain based on a planet-sized Dyson sphere that would have the computing power on the order of 10 to the 42 operations per second. Based on the highest number needed to simulate a brain, 10 to the 17th power, a total computing power of 10 to the 27th would be all that is required to simulate the brains of every single person on Earth. And if and when a Matryoshka brain could be built, it could simulate trillions and trillions of Earths. In fact, based on these computational densities, even a much smaller computer structure the size of, let's say, the Empire State Building could easily simulate trillions of humans. Now, to make a simulation, not only would the brain need to be simulated, but also our environment and the passing of time. How much computing power would this require? Well, simulating the entire universe down to the quantum level would require a computer theoretically bigger than the size of the universe. So that is not possible. But if all we're trying to do is create a realistic simulation for humans, we don't need that level of granularity. When people look up at the night sky, for example, those stars and other objects can be simulated with very few pixels to give it sufficient realism. So for example, if the computer saw that a human was about to look at a planet through a telescope or a bacteria through a microscope, it could fill in all the details in the moment the observation was being made. In fact, no errors could ever occur because the master computer could simply stop time, go back and correct the error, and rerun that part of the simulation so that any mistakes could be erased. If we simulate the brain of 100 billion humans for 100 years per human and 30 million seconds per year with 10 to the 17 operations per second, the figure would be 10 to the 37 operations. So even with a computer 0.001% the size of a Matryoshka brain, you could run this entire simulation in less than one second. So even a computer with this capability would have enough computational power to keep track of all the thoughts of all current human beings living on Earth millions of times over. And a super intelligent human or non-human civilization of the future may eventually build an astronomical number of such computers. So the computing power needed to run millions or billions of ancestor simulations is potentially possible with just a minor fraction of the computing power that a super intelligent civilization is likely to have. Nick Bostrom, professor of philosophy at Oxford University has argued 
There, there are three possibilities for the future of advanced intelligent beings in the universe. Possibility one is that nearly all technologically advanced civilizations go extinct before they have the capability to create ancestor simulations. Possibility two is that of all technologically advanced civilizations, none are interested in creating ancestor simulations that are so detailed that the simulated avatars are conscious. Possibility three is that if the above two are not true, then we are almost certainly living in a simulation. Why would three be true? Because if any of the technologically advanced civilizations of the universe is not extinct and is interested in creating ancestor civilizations, then they would almost certainly create millions or billions or even trillions of such simulations because it would only require a fraction of their computing power. And if billions of simulations are happening, then many more simulated people than non-simulated people are conscious. So it is much more probable that we are one of those conscious simulations than actual real living beings. So we are most likely inside a simulated reality. But then again, one or two could be true. If we do go on to create computer games, for example, with ancestor simulations, this would be strong evidence against possibilities one and two. If we're living in a simulation, then the cosmos that we're observing may just be a tiny piece of all existence. The physics of the real universe, where the computer running the simulation is located, may not even be anything like the physics of our universe. The crazy thing is that there are 7 billion of us humans on Earth. Even if one of us discovers that he or she is living in a simulation, then all of us are living in a simulation. But then again, the overlords might rerun the simulation to make sure that none of us discovers that we're living in a simulation. Given that our master programmer would know everything that's going on, including every firing of every neuron in our brains, I'm not sure this video is ever going to get seen because they could prevent me from making it. And if I do make it, you'll be prevented from seeing it. And if you do see it, your brain may be manipulated to think that I'm nothing but a quack and you will dismiss it. I can just about feel your dismissal of this video right now. But you better be careful that it's you who are thinking it and not some mind control architect pulling the strings, gloating that this is a harmony of mathematical precision.